students. Today, we are going to read Ladybugs. We're going to be looking at everything that this book does to help us understand the meaning behind the words and the pictures to learn as much as we can from our book. So we know that the author's written this book to teach us about ladybugs because of the title, Ladybugs, and because of the cover. What's that a photograph of? A ladybug. We're going to pay attention to the way that the author has organized all of the facts and the details that she wants to teach us. That means that we're going to pay attention to the table of contents and other text features like that that we see in nonfiction books that we can learn from. Ladybugs by Monica Hughes. She's our author. She wrote the words. Here is our table of contents. On the table of contents, it tells us some of the smaller topics and what pages we would find that information on. Ladybugs is on page four. Kinds of ladybugs is on page six. There's more than one kind of ladybug? And if I wanted to learn about them, I would go to page six. Ladybug bodies is on page eight. Ladybug wings is on page 10. Looking for ladybugs. If I wanted to know all about how to look for them or where to look for them, I would find that information on page 12. Ladybug eggs. Ladybugs must lay eggs. If I wanted to know more about that, I would read page 14. Changing. <gasps> Ladybugs must change. They must not always look the same. That's on page 16. Growing up. Hmm, if I wondered about the difference between baby ladybugs and adult ladybugs and how they grow up, I would read page 18. Food for ladybugs. If I wanted to learn about the key detail of what ladybugs eat, I would look on page 20. Ladybugs in danger. Maybe there's a predator that wants to eat them. If I wanted to learn more about when they're in danger or who they're in danger from, I would read page 22. The table of contents helps us find out what kind of key details we might learn about our main topic, and it's also going to help us find what page we would find that information on. Some words are going to be really thick and dark. If we wanted to know what those words mean, we would look in the glossary. The glossary is in the back of the book. The glossary is on page 24, and the index is on page 24 as well. The index tells us where those special dark words are. They're bold text. Ladybugs. Ladybugs are small beetles. Most ladybugs are red with black spots. Hmm. I wonder why one ladybug is small and one ladybug is big. What does that help me with? Why would the author do that? This one I can see really close up. It's almost like I have a magnifying glass and I can look very close at it, like zooming in to see all the little details on the ladybug. This one, that's what they really look like. That's their real size in real life. And this is up close so I can see better. Kinds of ladybugs. There are more than 5,000 kinds of ladybugs. The number of spots tells what kind it is. Oh, wow. So these are all different and they all have a different number of spots. Hmm. What does the author teach us about the ladybug spots? That the number of the spots, how many spots there are, tells us what kind of ladybug it is. Ladybug bodies. Ladybugs are insects. Their bodies have three parts. Here's a part. 
That's the first part. Here's a part. That's the second part. And here's a part. That's the third part. These labels that point to the body parts are almost like a diagram. A diagram tells us the parts of, of a body, of an animal, or the parts of a machine, if we were reading about machines. Diagrams label the parts of something for us in a nonfiction book. They labeled these with numbers because their text told us their bodies have three parts. If they wanted us to know more, they would have used words on their labels. What would they have labeled this part? Head. This part would have been labeled thorax. And this part would have been named abdomen. Ladybugs have three parts to their bodies. Ladybugs have six legs. They have antenna on their heads. So here's another diagram. This time they use the words to help us. This is their leg. And this is their antenna. Hmm. If I left these pages up here, what could you tell me about ladybug bodies? You could tell me that they have six legs or that they, they have antenna on their head, that their bodies have three parts. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Ladybug wings. Ladybugs have two pairs of wings. So these red ones, they're labeled cover wing because they cover the other wings. And this diagram has another label here. It says flight wing. Flight, like flying. Oh, they use these wings for flying and they use these wings to cover their flight wings, probably to protect them. Hmm. The cover wings open up when ladybugs fly. Then their flight wings come out. Hmm. Looking for ladybugs. Ladybugs live in gardens. They eat bugs that can hurt plants. So according to the text, where would I find a ladybug? You're right. It tells us right in the text that ladybugs live in gardens. Ladybug eggs. Female ladybugs lay lots of tiny eggs. There's one of those bold text words. It's dark. The letters are a little thicker in that word. It must be one of the special words in the glossary. Female means girl. So female ladybugs lay lots of tiny eggs. And in a few days, the eggs hatch. Oh, that's another important word. It's in bold text. It's dark and the letters are a little thicker. They hatch. I've heard about eggs hatching like chickens. They hatch, they come out of the egg. Ladybug larva come out. Oh my goodness. How does the author help us understand what larva look like and what ladybug eggs look like? They give us wonderful close up photographs. Wow, I kind of thought ladybugs are cute. Are their larvae cute? No, they look very different, don't they? They don't look like their parents when they come out of their egg, when they hatch. So these are bold text words. It's how the author tells us that it's an important word we need to understand. Changing. Do you see this? It tells us that we're going to be reading about changing. Ladybugs change. So this page and this page will be about changing. A ladybug larva sheds its skin as it grows. Then it changes to a pupa. 
I can see that sheds and pupa are important words. How did the author help me understand which are the important words? You're right. She put them in bold text and then she puts them in the glossary to tell us what they mean. Sheds means that it comes off of it. See? It's like it's taking off its skin. It outgrew it. So it leaves it behind and it grows new skin. After it sheds, it turns into a pupa. The pupa hangs onto a leaf. So it looks like this. So it does change. This is the larva. That's first. Next, it's a pupa. That's what it looks like here. Growing up. A few days go by and the pupa opens. And out comes a grown up ladybug. So first it's a larva. Next it's a pupa. Then a few days go by and last it's a grown up ladybug. Food for ladybugs. Ladybugs eat aphids. Hmm, I wonder what an aphid is. I wonder what they look like. Here's the word aphids. It's a special word. I know because it's bold text. It's thick and dark. I could find out what that word means in the glossary. But wait a minute. Here it is as a label. That's the same word, A-P-H-I-D. This one has an S because they eat more than one. But this is just one. That's an aphid. They eat other garden pests too. Oh, that's right. Ladybugs live in gardens and they eat the bugs that are bad for plants. That must be what pests mean, bad bugs, that you don't want around. So ladybugs are very helpful. Ladybugs in danger. Birds eat ladybugs. Sometimes ants attack ladybugs too. Some ladybugs can squirt a kind of juice. This juice can hurt some birds and bugs. I love how the author gives us up close photographs to show us all those details so we really understand the text. Here we are in the back of the book. There's the glossary. We've talked a lot about the glossary. The glossary is like a special dictionary just for the words in this book that are very important. The author made all of these words bold text, fat, in the book to help us see them better and know that they were important. Antenna, aphid, female, hatch, insect, larva, pear, pupa, and shed. If I wanted to know where that word was in the book, I could look in the index. It'll tell me what page the word eggs was on or what page the word antenna was on. But if I wanted to know what the word antenna meant, I could use my photograph clues to help me by using the label to find that part of the body on a diagram, or I could look in the glossary. Antenna. More than one are antennae. They are the feelers on an insect's head that help it smell, see, or hear. Huh. So we have five senses, and we use one body part for each of those senses. But antenna, they take care of the smelling, the seeing, and the hearing for the ladybug. Nice. Thank you for reading this book with me today. Did you notice that our author really used a lot of different structures, a lot of different features in our nonfiction text? She did it to help us understand everything that we need to know about ladybugs. What was the main topic for this book? Ladybugs, that's right. Can you remember several of the key details that you learned about ladybugs? List some of those key details across your fingers. See if you know at least five, maybe you know 10.